Hello, YouTube, and welcome back in. Uh, we're just looking at our empire here and what we're trying to do. Uh, looks like we are founding stuff. And the suggestion was made in chat to hold this trader for the new city since we're settling this next turn anyways. Um, and I think that's a darn good idea. Uh, I think so, Mac. Yeah, pretty sure. I could be wrong. Um... We should, we should take a moment and plan some cities. I think that's what we're going to get into for the first part of this video. Um, and, and, I, and if I can just sprawl out, like, even, like, six to eight cities, I'll, I'll feel comfortable enough with a religious victory. He already has, I think he's going to get a religion. He usually does. Um, but, gosh, if we could spread him, that'd be awesome. We're definitely going for religion. Hi, Matt. How's it going? What's the difference between cult and religion? Haven't played Civ Six. <laughs> Hi, uh, hi, 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 we Charlie. How's it going? Um, <laughs> difference between cult and religion is semantics or timing. Um, yeah, so let's hold this. I'm tempted to buy this tile. 95, and then we could probably afford to grab this tile for the new city next city next turn. Uh, that will kill our money, though. And if he comes and declares, I mean, I'll be really sad. Uh, the also also the difference between a cult and a religion is finality, typically. When you're running a fairly peaceful game, how many military units do you need to keep on hand to maintain that peace? Good question. Um, depends if you have alliances with people. Um, in Civ Six, once you start the friendship train, um, it's hard to break it. So if you if you if you're able to to make friends early, um, you should probably be able to keep them for the rest of the game. Um, and, and and then at that point, you don't need much of a military at all. Plus, you should text so hard ahead, far ahead that you'll be fine. Uh, Matteo, thank you for the thank you for the follow, man. Welcome on in. So this is holy site. So like maybe we're settling a city. We still have to think about our government, but maybe the government goes in between like these cities. All right, so let's let's think about this. If we settle that city. One two three so there really won't be overlap this will reach all the way up here we have we would have room for a coastal city actually if we wanted to that would be fairly reasonable it's not great <laughs> good morning maestro how you doing buddy um we don't have any banana sy synergy right what do we take for pantheon chop right yeah harvest Harvest, harvest. So then this would be a pretty good holy site. Culture bomb, all of this. Probably get rid of the bananas for like campus and commercial hub. And I know that this loyalty looks awful uh, and, and certainly that's a concern. Uh, but I think we'll be able to fix this with more cities like as we just expand again if he starts forward settling me like two more cities over here we're, we're, we're gonna be angry we're gonna be salty as heck one two three so certainly another city down here or maybe something in the middle and then another one over here oh that would be pretty good one two three so this would fit that would fit one, two, three, one, two, three. Oh, dear. Actually, this won't fit now. Unless we did Aqueduct. That's technically fine. You guys, you guys know how I feel about Aqueducts. We might do it, though. Are free cities a real pain in the rear? Um, not typically. Not, 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 they're not too bad. Is this land worth claiming? Possibly not. One, two, three, four. So then this becomes a city too. And again, I, I, I know that the... Um, I know the loyalty looks bad, but this isn't happening soon. And as we expand down, especially if we give them food tiles, they're going to be fine. Hi, she devil. Uh, <laughs> just continue the game from yesterday. Continue the game from yesterday. 
All right, this is ambitious over here. Are they like barb camps and they sometimes units that attack your city? Yes, they do. They do indeed. One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay, this actually blocks everything. Um, we can put it on this side of the river for defense. And then just like one more city in here. I don't know where exactly, but let's just earmark that for now. Um, this seems really vulnerable. And also isn't super worth it. So let's move this over here. Something like that. So that would leave us with one, two, three, four, five, six cities. Why is Poundmaker literally in every game? I don't know. He totally is. <laughs> He's shovel man. I'm, 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 that's not. <laughs> God damn it. Um, okay. Oh yeah, this city's a bummer, but it has good districts. And so it, 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 it probably becomes required and is just going to have to borrow some tiles from our cap. No sea resources to really validate this coastal city. Would we rather do an aqueduct city? I know that sounds insane for me. I know that actually sounds crazy. All right, and then I really like the idea of this. All right, I really hate the bugged pin. So that's our government. And these can either be campuses or uh, commercial or uh, theater squares. It doesn't really matter. Kind of like this. I like that a lot. I don't. That seems like it'll work. <laughs> Failing. <laughs> it's cool, man. <laughs> no, <laughs> you got bamboozled by my title. You got. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to mislead you ever. I, I, I'm so sorry. We, we had a question in chat about cults and religion because my stream title today uh, says something about cults and, uh, and, and it was mistakenly taken for a new Civ mechanic. Uh, that's my bad. I, I didn't mean to let my dishonesty uh, uh, bum you out there, buddy. I'm so sorry. I weirdly like this Aqueduct City better. I, we're overriding some weird stuff for it. But we can get this aqueduct. There's a lot of production here, so I don't feel super bad about this. And if he doesn't settle over here, we could we could maybe get another like like two cities down here. It's it, that's super 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 uh, optimistic, but it certainly could work. You could do this with double uh, double holy site bonus. So these are boosting these. We can go over what these are going to be in a second. Like, that's fairly functional. In fact, you could do the government down here in between these guys. But I think it's actually just worse because I'm going to get these cities faster. And so they'll have time to grow and actually fit in the government. Um, but this holy site is plus one for the two woods, plus one for that district triangle. So that's plus two. Uh, two more. Two more. So that's plus three. And then the government will make this a plus four holy site. The campus will wind up being uh, one... Uh, two, three. This campus will wind up being uh, also that. It's possible that we put a district over there. I don't know what that tile is yet. Barely functional is on G and my da dating profile. How dare you? No, it's not. <laughs> and that's because that would be a lie. It, 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 lack of function, maybe. Um, <laughs> I don't I don't I try not to false advertise on dating profiles, Maestro. 
Uh, <laughs> it should say absolutely not functional. Um, all right, so that's a reasonable. I think that's that, that's kind of fine. Worst case scenario, we could sneak in a, like a kind of crappy but like somewhat productive uh, coastal city over there. Um, this is weird, but I kind of like it. Um, that is on my dating profile. Um, just so you know. Um, but yeah. All right, cool. So that's a decent little plan. And yeah, I think I, I think we save this. We'll send an internal trade route, boost up our roads. That way, if a military conflict happens, we'll be okay. Plus, we can just funnel our settlers down through that road. Um, back. Uh, okay, cool. So we have astrology. We have our basic text here. Um, we could go and get to the point where we're chopping jungle. We, we kind of want to target uh, masonry, bronze working, and irrigation here just so that we can um, have our builders do all the things. Um, we're also going to have horses, which could be some decent defense for us, uh, but that's not for some time. And next turn, we boost early empire, and then we can crank out more settlers, which will be great. Cool. Cool. All right, I feel reasonably reasonably good about this. Stonehenge still available. That's kind of funny. Um, and yeah, we're gonna we're gonna go for more settlers right away here. While we get irrigation, are we getting a farm ever? Would you ever give up this production for like triple farm boost? Weirdly, we might build some aqueducts this game. Just for you guys. Just for you aqueduct lovers out there. And and we really want a suzerain candy before we continue exploring, frankly. I wonder if we wait. I wonder if we hold this scout. Suzerain up candy so we can start getting some free relics from them. That would be really nice. Um, we'd have to suicide less missionaries. In fact, we could maybe even just avoid that policy entirely. So there's our early empire boost. We get an extra food in our base here because we settled on top of the rice. Uh, and then we're certainly buying that tile because now they're going to grow very fast. That's going to help a lot with our loyalty. Um, and they have reasonable production to go along with it. They should grow here. Um, all those things are good things. Um, we could, we could have just built that, but like 21 turns to pick up this tile is bad. Um, we could put, we could switch these actually, but am I buying another tile for this holy site or am I just placing this holy site here? Actually that, that wouldn't work, right? Cause well, we could shift this. No, 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 no. That doesn't work because this is their commercial hub, right? Yeah, so it doesn't go this way. It has to go the way we've planned it because this is this is theirs, and then these are theirs, and you have to you want to put your you want to put your holy site on the river and the commercial hub on the river. So this is kind of the only option we have, I think. And we have some archers uh, in case this conflict happens. Let's oopsies, I did not mean to click that, but that's not a terrible move. Unless he declares next turn. So four turns until growth. Um, I could see starting with something else. Like just lock in the holy site. What if we started with a granary here? Like they have the growth to kind of justify it. And then that would help with our loyalty issues. Just start exerting like a nice big loyalty radius. That way these cities can be actually settled. I think I like that. Um, although military military conflict looks nigh, uh, which doesn't make me super happy. So, so he's probably going to yell at me for forward settling. And yeah, I think we actually just hold the scout. Like maybe even the scout comes back. Well, no, we want him to explore eventually, but we definitely want to suzerain candy. We get a free envoy if we suzerain them. I'd love that to be two envoys, and then and then the uh, the suzerain wouldn't be so bad. We got to get to four. 
Uh, can I summarize how loyalty works? Sure. So loyalty, um, and, and, and this is actually very, very relevant to what we're working on. Um, if we just go ahead and click our settle, settler lens, we see all these numbers, okay? This, this represents loyalty. Um, and, and a city will start with 100 loyalty, okay? So we just founded the city, 100 loyalty. It's close enough to my capital, there, capital, there aren't penalties. We have plus 23 loyalty per turn here, um, and that's great. Loyalty is largely based on population, and the amount of loyalty exerted is largely based on a, um, a combination of that plus the age that you're in. So in a standard age, you're, every citizen gives you one loyalty, um, and then this pressure also affects other cities within nine tiles, but is 10% less effective per tile. That's why you see, that's why you see kind of this like scaling like 20, and then it'll eventually go down and down and down, um, and then, and then have some reasonably safe ones. So if you grow your cities, you will exert a larger, like from nine tiles from here, we're going to be exerting positive loyalty, meaning, okay, cool. Now go settle this city then go settle this city and then we can push this loyalty back down because we'll be exerting our own loyalty from pressure from from our citizens and stuff this way um, but that's why we're prioritizing the ability to grow even more here um, rather than like a monument for example um, and we will get some culture uh, some culture out of just ha having citizens um, so plus 1.5 of my culture is from population um, and then one of it's from my palace. But yeah, so that's 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 where population comes into play. Population is a little restricted in Civ 6 um, because of housing caps. Uh, but it's an example of how it can be beneficial. I'm buying that too. This This really, really hurts if we go to war. There we go. Didn't register. Huh, some little little buggy things we're running into, but nothing nothing that's been a deal breaker. You d bag. I have no words. I have no words for you, sir. That is an awful city. It doesn't. It can't get an aqueduct. It takes my wine. Ugh. Although I've got plenty of wine left, am I right? <laughs> um, all right, so early empire next turn, we'll switch into the policy. This makes me nervous. Then we send this to the cap. So more food and a little extra production here. Yeah, you guys get it. Yay. <laughs> Can you not settle me, dude? Like, seriously. Go away. Oh, dear. Hi, Shaka. Did that help you? Um, explaining Matt, Matt, Matt's you? Did that help? Uh... Sure. Yeah, he's on the other side of them, so that's fine. Uh, yeah, did that help you loyalty-wise? Thank you for the, the nice puns, well. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah, if you have other questions like that, please feel free. We're happy to answer questions here. At least I am. The penalty of not having loyalty. Okay, so the last part of the loyalty equation is if you lose 100% of your uh, points here, of your loyalty points, po points, points. Um, if you lose, if you lose all 100 loyalty, your city will flip to being a neutral city. It will have two immediately hostile units in it. Your units will get kicked out, um, and it will be basically kind of like a barbarian city. They call it a free city. Um, and if that, and then that free city will, it can remain free indefinitely. And if if his loyalty is strong enough, let's say, like if we had loyalty issues here, um, he could just absorb my city for free after a certain amount of time. That free city may offer to become a, a part of someone else's empire if their loyalty is that much higher than yours. Hey, Sad and Alone. Yeah, we're still trying to work on this. Do I like the loyalty mechanic? Yeah, I, I, I think I think it's so much better. It makes so much sense, right? 
Like, originally, like, if we were playing this game pre-Rise and Fall, we could have just sent, like, two settlers all the way down here, cut him off, and then backfilled our empire. And then that would have been lovely, right? As long as we could hold this front. Like, we could send these cities right away. But that that's kind of dumb. Like, that's not really how, like, conceptually how you do it. Like, you you would kind of sprawl city for city versus, like, going the really, like, the, 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 the Lewis and Clark expedition over here near Spain and then settle those. And then now he's cut off. Like, we make friends with him and he's no longer a threat. Um, this is certainly much more annoying, uh, but I think I think it I think it, it 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 makes sense enough that I like it. All right, so settlers, we have fifteen production here. These are boosted, which is great. question for you and maybe this will help not go to war with him yet uh and he would pay me for open borders let's do it yeah i get you old mcdonald i get you yeah if you're playing original civ none of this really applies to you or original civ 6 rather can you just like why wouldn't you expand down here look at this amazing city you could have we are just passing by, dude. You forward settled me. I just want you to remember that. And he just grabbed this tile because of this city now. He can grab so many tiles by sending trade routes. It's so freaking annoying. No, 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 no. I should be sending delegations too. We we generally want to be peaceful. As annoying as these settles are, I, I don't know that they're enough to want to make me like absolutely want to go to war. Now that this is a road, we can move back and promote and we can just like gather the vision. So he's got iron, and you can tell from the science on this tile. There's no reason for science to be on this tile, except for the fact that he's discovered iron. It's within his borders, so he sees it. Um, so that's kind of annoying. We're hard teching irrigation. I think that's okay. I know we have a farm to make, but I don't, I don't plan on getting builders for a while. Um, and it would be nice to be able to maybe use those builders to improve both the diamonds and the spices here. Um, and we are, we're pretty happy about this trade route because now we get this double movement. This would normally take one, two, and then three, but now we get to go one, two. Um, we may come down and settle the spice city to do that cutoff thing that I was just talking about. Otherwise it's, it's, it's try to work towards Spain. It, it depends on what we're more afraid of here. He's making me nervous. Temple of Artemis is gone. The man who has he did indeed get a holy site. Or the irrigation of We're a doing fine. Is not less worthy of honor than its conqueror. The age is going to end, though. And that means people are likely to go into golden ages, uh, which could be very problematic for us um, because they can grab four profit points per turn. Um, and that would really slow us down. Like we're we're definitely ahead. Some there is one profit gone because of Stonehenge, um, but we do need to kind of race to a religion. And we're certainly not going to a golden age. We're not getting six more era score, unfortunately. Um, where's that barb camp that just spawned? We got it. We have that one to deal with. And there's one up there. Okay, that's not a problem. 
Seven players? Yeah, there are seven players. We uh, we went standard size map and dropped a player because I was really... I, 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 di I didn't have any room in any of my games, and I was just really losing my mind over it. Let's send, let's send at least one archer to deal with this. I don't want to take all of my military away because if he does declare, I'm really, really sad. He's going to send me a traitor soon. That's so Hey, why are you boxing me in, bro? Okay. So probably a standard dedication. Although spreading religion to my cities might be fairly easy. Especially if I'm expanding quickly here. I wish I could see everybody else's dedication before having to pick mine, but I guess that's part of the challenge, huh? So we are population three over here already, meaning the city is generating 0.9 culture. So they're, they're, they are expanding so, kind of okay. I would love to buy these tiles away from him, but I'm, I, I can't. I don't think I can afford to fight that fight. We're going to need archers um, and, and money. Not for buying tiles, sadly. So theoretically, 11 turns until we get our profit. Which I think, I think we can take Exodus. We do that. We keep doing the all-in religion thing. But what's the, what's the other, what's the flip side of this? Kill the barbarian, like one, two, maybe three, four, five era score. Versus if I just convert three cities at six, yeah, I think we take Exodus. Because this is two per city that you convert, versus this is one. And I'm not getting science buildings for a while. Is stealing a settler worth getting my butt kicked in a nation era war? Uh, it, usually, yeah. Usually, you, you definitely have to pivot and, and build military and stuff. But you're going to want that military eventually anyways. So it winds up being pretty much okay. Many useful objects, such as wickerwork picnic baskets. The problem with settling the Aqueduct City first is it really, it truly won't have the ability to grow and help our future loyalty issues. Um, so we might, we maybe should have gone here. I think I could sneak in this one. Start with this one and then maybe be able to get this one next. And just hope. We're on the hope plan, friends. Okay, so he looks like he might be going to clear it. Why don't profits spawn at the required number? Wait, what do you mean? What do you mean, Manamar? I don't understand that question, bud. Hey, Atlas. How you doing, buddy? <laughs> so you watched... You you, you hung out during our D&D &D game last night. What would you think, Atlas? <laughs> Uh, I, I have, uh, I have a bard, um, and I have cloned myself because I'm a narcissist. Um, and I, my main, my main damage dealing source is I animate spoons and knives and stuff. And then I attack my enemies with them. And it's actually pretty disgusting, <laughs> but I was able to do that last night, which was fun. I think we should put this over here now, just in case we have to switch to military. Like if somebody declares on us, it'd be sad. Uh, I, yeah, I did say potentially. Um, I, it could be less, I guess, if we ran a project, is what I meant. And we do... Do we like... If I, if I do this, then we can't do this. Yeah, so if we want to squeeze in the Aqueduct City, and we very well may, it does, in fact, look like this city's going here. Yeah, I think I probably misspoke. That's probably not your fault there, buddy. 
Spain con conquered Tokyo, so Japan's in the game. And yes, indeed, we can see we can see that the Cree are now going to beat us there. Spain will become very close to beating there. The freaking Zulu might beat us there, even though he doesn't have a stinking holy site because everybody's in a golden age, except for me. Which means I think I am going to run a project after the settler. Again, I don't really want to explore until the candy suzerain. I might be able to steal that, though. Okay, he's sitting on swords. Wait, Poundmaker has some? Wait a minute, what? So this wasn't Stonehenge. This was just somebody getting a religion faster than me. Wow. I don't want to risk this. This is too scary. I think we do need to run this project. God, it only speeds it up by like two turns. Um, Russia is not in the game uh, because they would be earning writer and artist points already. A good thought, though. Makes you wish you had a lo local campaign you could play. Yeah, we have fun together. It's definitely a good time. I love D&D. So you're going to block me from getting this. You're really annoying. All right, we get to start with a 2-2 tile. Uh, I, as much as I do want to use a builder to lift this, I almost think we should just lock in the holy site. Honestly, maybe we have them start an archer. I don't know. Probably just a monument. All right, let's have our archers. This gives us a boost. I think we're heading over here next. See, so so now we're kind of we're slowly pushing that loyalty down, slowly, slowly, slowly. You listen to my uh, D and D podcast. I'm actually writing a campaign, um, Fat Dog Share, uh, and I, I I hope to run it with like many people. I I, I thought about I, I'm playing with the idea. I, there's nothing. Please don't please don't hold me to any of this. There's nothing in stone, uh, but I'm writing a campaign. I'm definitely taking my regular D and D group through it first off. Um, but then I'd like to, I'd like to run it. Uh, we may, we may wind up with it on YouTube at some point. Um, but I'd like to run it multiple times cause I'm writing, I'm not going to do, I don't have the endurance for like, I'm a DM year round and I'm going to create, you know, like I want to write like one good, like six session campaign or something like that. Um, and I think it would be a lot of fun to, to, to run like multiple different people through it and stuff. Did this? Did we delete this? I think we did. That should be there. If we get locked out of religion, we can start a domination game. It's true. So that's the easiest path. It's just this. I, I don't trust him. What do you guys think five turns just to accelerate this by two we have we have five faith per turn so we we possibly could faith by this although i'd love to just faith by so you know what? we do need to run it it'll give us some extra faith which will ultimately give us era score by just grabbing some missionaries the problem is he's going to have a religion now and if he has a holy site here like he's going to settle his like like it yeah it's really bad and seriously you got your freaking whatever <laughs> Yeah, I don't, I don't have that kind of endurance, Mad Admiral. So I would like to write like a short, like eventually my campaign will be probably a year's worth of a campaign. Um, but the first, the first act of it uh, will be probably like six, six or eight sessions. I, I really can't apologize to you, buddy. You're gonna get mad at everything I do because I'm gonna settle this and just dumb. 
Okay, so this is gone. Still think he's the most scary military threat at the moment. Let's just link these guys up. They have the same movement. Hey, hot chili. How's it going? Okay, so we have our granary. We can get up to seven population here. Um, I think we want to start them on builders. Although that ha this would be interesting too. But it's a plus zero holy site right now. It's not giving us adjacency bonus. So just finishing it isn't enough. We'd have to finish this and get them the shrine. We would, of course, get the food and the population. But I think we've got that covered. I think I'd rather get, start getting builders or even a monument, frankly. Yeah, let's get a monument. That way maybe we can snag some of these tiles before he steals them. Is the Cree stealer of tiles. Wine of the mind. Yep, so we are tied with this player now. We have two profits gone. Yeah, I'm pretty glad that we're running this project. Um, oh, and there's iron on our uh, holy site. So we absolutely have iron. Unfortunately, we don't get to work that tile, but that's okay. It's a, it's a good holy site. So I'm happy keeping it. Let's go this way. What's that tile? Nothing. Yeah, it's production. Philip got the pyramids. Yes, he did. All right, so our project's done next turn. We sh that should that should be enough to snag it. Third profit's gone by Spain. But this should give us our profit. A strong economy begins with a strong, well educated. If you start with a standard size game and six players, everybody gets profit. Yes, that is absolutely true. Although I don't I don't like doing that. Like we're we're in a game where two two. We're in a standard size map and um, minus one player, meaning there are only like like still two people won't get a profit. So we're basically racing two people, which is the same as just playing on a normal, you know, a normal map. All right. So we settle on the stone, which doesn't give us a benefit at all. Um, God, that's plus three. But this will be plus one, two. Yeah, because I'll want to chop these anyway, so it'll really just be plus two. So we can lock this in right away. And then probably start with Monument. And on to Political Philosophy, uh, we still need Settlers now. Here's our Profit. The one nice thing about saving the Profit would be if we can fit, like finish our Holy Sites... Um, then we then we automatically spread our religion to any of these cities that have um, that have holy sites when we when we when we found it. So we may wind up holding this guy for a little bit. Um, it will kind of hurt our era score stuff, but I don't think that'll be a problem. And again, I don't want to explore. We could go profit explore, but nah. All right, policy-wise, I think we're still on this route. We can take a couple more gold per turn because we have three archers now. I think that's probably worth it. Yep, so he's continues to just settle just whatever stupid city he feels like, Writing even, even if it doesn't make sense. It's part of the human condition to want to share things. Right, I do kind of want to see what's going on there. Opinions. Help us make educated decisions. And of course, the AI loves to just get in the way of what you're doing. 
becoming increasingly annoying. Cool. Well, we have our win con. Sort of. Devil's gone. No surprise wars, please. Some monuments for culture and borders. Especially, we keep spawning next to the Kree. It's so irritating. Okay, so Spain's up there already. Interesting. And they are, you can see on our UI here that they are in Golden Ages. So this is why settling cities is actually kind of tough right now. Like this especially. Spain's closer than I thought. There's Hojo. Yeah, I don't think he's going to make it. I agree, old McDonald. Hojo's having a rough, rough game. For certain. All of the wonders are going, and he's loving them. He's got the Abadana now. All right, so let's go ahead and get those holy sites. Ha. Huh. I see. <laughs> okay. Please don't spread Buddhism to me. I don't want to be Buddhist. Wealth consists not in having great possessions. So an error score for getting the currency first. Um, yeah, this is annoying. Are we still, are we still sold on this city? This is actually kind of cute if we just settle the dies. It's very defensible. And it gets us a really good holy site, I assume, here. But what's the loyalty? How bad is this? It's getting bad. We're pop two here. Top five, we can increase that a bit. Might be safer to settle this first, weirdly. Hi, M1A1. How you doing, bud? Because this should be ours, no problem. The coastal is definitely ours, no problem. We don't have to worry about it. I hate you guys. Move. Sure. Good luck, buddy. I hope you live. Oracle gone now, too. None of the wonders are going to be available. And we have another barb camp somewhere. Let's use our handy dandy lens. Our handy dandy lens doesn't show a barb camp. Oh, it's there. Okay. Not my problem. There we go. Okay. So we converted one of our cities to Buddhism. That's, that's all he's got. But if we complete the holy site and then just use our profit, we just have to budget our era time quite, quite, uh, quite specifically. Wow, M1A1, I love that. <laughs> Day started off interesting. Got a call from Redeem to come down to her office to have a little chat, thinking you're screwed. Uh, and then she gave you a gift to Outback. Aw, as a thank you for hard work this summer. Isn't that nice? Doesn't that, doesn't that go like such a long way when people do nice little things like that? Especially when it's your boss. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is a great holy site. All right, so this moves. 
Otherwise, that's going to get in the way of our districts. If this is woods, I might just leave a standalone holy site here. But for sure, we're getting this holy site. Dance of the Aurora. <laughs> They're just getting a Pantheon. That's interesting. What if we do settle this now? Because this is minus nine. But it's also the one I really want to get to. It definitely has the best district. It's also going to create the most tension. Seven turns to get over there. Only five to get here. Let's go this way. Let's go that way. You're supposed to go on the same tile, you idiots. Okay, not woods. That's a ri Oh my god, that's a holy site too, huh? But that's hard to protect. If we go to war, like he just pillages this, and how do we how do we like go deal with that? Kind of don't. Toledo is huge. That's terrifying. They grow to three next turn. They don't really have that good of tiles to work. I think we can just override this. I would like... I, I, I really wanted to harvest uh, the marsh here for just straight up population. Um, but I think we're getting past the point where that's going to be good. I'd rather just get the holy site so we can get all the era score when we pop our profit. Classic Republic for sure here. Settlers production. Um, we're not getting builders. We're actually getting districts. Uh, Diplomatic League we want to run. Hold on a second. Because Diplomatic League can't... We're going to get an Envoy and Candy. Um, how do you only have three? I thought you had four before. Um, yeah, so we want double Envoy, and then we want a Suzerain Candy, and then continue to explore, so maybe we can get some Relics. Um, should also take a look at these. Warrior Monks, Meeting House, Divine Inspiration, Synagogue, Feed the World, and Watt, Jesuit Education. Okay, cool. Yeah, we're good. So we can get our Reliquaries, I think. Should be fine. Hmm. So our next policy switch can just be a couple turns away. So we could switch. So we could go five turns into something, switch. Like five turns into drama, switch for mysticism. And go into theology. We definitely need to get our Prasats uh, prioritized over feudalism. I'd love to get a Colosseum. Maybe that's even more important. How good is a Colosseum for us? It's going to get right in the middle of our government plaza. We built the Colosseum where this campus is. It could be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven cities. Pretty darn good. We can um, we can think about that. I'll give up some adjacency for a freaking Colosseum. That's for sure. Although with this many civs in the game, it might not be super likely. But that would be great. Um, especially considering like this was our new continent and we didn't get to settle any of it. Because this jerk... Still room to settle down here, too, which is kind of interesting. Might be tough to hold and defend. Okay, so we don't need Diplomatic League right away. We can take Charismatic Leader for now. That's that. All that was to say is that which policy, which, which Diplomatic policy do we run first? We go this route. Take the gold. 
gold. So five turns into into games and rec. So we've grown here. Interesting. All right, so he continues to grab this stuff. No hour of life is wasted that is spent in the saddle. Um. Hey, house, how you doing, buddy? What's happening, my friend? So mean. I hate you. I hate you, Cree. I hate you. How's Chicago, my friend? It's a beautiful it seems like a beautiful day out there. I wonder if we start going towards knights on the off chance that we'll need them. And just battle him back a bit. Certainly a thing we could do. All right. And we are actually, we're over, we're slightly over on this video, but we're good, good timing. Let's go ahead and end it uh, here. Thank you for watching on YouTube. If you are watching on YouTube, and I hope that you are, Please stop by uh, twitch.tv slash the game mechanic. Come say hi to us in uh, in person. It'll be it'll be great. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see ya.